I've always felt that in some way I never left my closet. People look down on me and look at me differently because I'm living my life, not to the fullest, but my extra life. And my extra life is just too much for people. I'm Berton Banks, and I'm Black, queer, and autistic. I had this fourth grade teacher that was not very accommodating to things, and he would always say, oh, yeah, you didn't remember that correctly. Oh, yes, I did. I remember exactly what you wore that day, how many steps you took before you um, would do something, because he said that I was cheating off someone's paper, which I definitely was not. And it just so happened that I was the only um, black kid in the class. And also the only kid that was on the spectrum. They feel they I have to take care of us. And so a part of that, they kind of overstep our voices, which overshadows and we can't, we can't see us. If we're covered in their shadow, they can't see us, they can't hear us. We have unconscious bias that we're constantly dealing with. Everyone, my name is Diego, Diego Mariscal and I am a queer Mexican-American disabled person. Uh, people underestimate my intelligence. Uh, people underestimate my worth. I felt discriminated by a system. It didn't matter really my qualifications or my knowledge or expertise in that space. I think an object of pity and inspiration um, and nothing more. So I think it's, it, it's been more of systematic oppression. I think as an entrepreneur, this is something that I go through every single day, that um, a lot of people doubted me, and doubted, uh, doubted that I was gonna be successful, doubted that, um, that my idea was gonna be fruitful, doubted that I knew what I was doing. And so um, this constant um, struggle of having to prove myself and prove my worth it is something that I, um, I struggle with every day. They could be discriminating against me because I'm gay. They could be discriminating against me because I'm Hispanic or disabled. I'm George. I'm queer and I have Asperger's. I had no idea that I was on the autism spectrum until I was put in that class when I was 11 years old, almost 12. So imagine being 11 years old in the class with children that were more severely autistic than you were and being told you're different this is who you are imagine being told that at 11 years old and not with nobody telling me but from me learning from my surroundings it always starts with white people right yeah. like white people get their piece of the pie first and then it feels like we get the leftovers I'm blessed and i am a high femme with cerebral palsy so feeling discriminated or different didn't really happen until I became an adult and went to college and, and started trying to meet other people outside of platonic relationships. It was when I wanted to explore what dating and intimacy would feel like is that when I really realized, oh, these are some, these are going to be some problems for other people uh, in getting to know me. Um, the fact is, is that everyone will be impacted by disability at some point in their lives. So it just shocks me that it's still on the last frontier of social change. You know, I'm sorry, I gotta blame the gays on this one because they're the most problematic, like, it's so uh, judgmental group of people that are like projecting so like projecting so much of the hurt and trauma that they experienced or feared about rejection that they are literally rejecting I'm beautiful everyone because I am Mexican I'm beautiful because I'm different and I am beautiful because there is only one me and there will never be another me ever again my hope for the future is that regardless of disability, sexual orientation, or ethnicity, all the unicorns across the world get to step out of their closets and shine. We need to be able to live the extra lives that we were meant to, regardless of where the world wants to put us or where the world thinks we belong.